Hello and welcome to the Technical Effects YouTube channel. I'm James and I'm the founder of Technical Effects. It's a pleasure to have you here. This is Technical Insights and it's episode number 143. And we've just reached 47,000 subscribers and I really appreciate you all subscribing. And if you're not, please do subscribe, like and comment. I appreciate you being here. In this week's episode, we're going to be taking a look at five markets. We have the US dollar index. We have the yen index, US oil, which is interesting at the moment. We've got Euro USD and Euro AUD. Those are the markets that we are going to be taking a look at this week. Of course, starting from the naked charts as always. Let's get into it. This here is the US dollar. So um, we do the same thing on all time frames. So let's first of all start off on the daily time frame and get our overall direction. That is our higher low point. We had our previous higher high right there. And this here is our current higher high point. So we have seen price currently take a uh, retracement here on the daily time frame, bringing us in this trading range down into the 61.8 or close into the 61.8 retracement there. Also aligning with previous structure points. So we're retesting the previous daily structure point right here. And we did also close some of this imbalance. Or sorry, we've closed all of this imbalance right here. Only imbalance on the daily time frame left behind is down here at the 78.6. Price could potentially roll over, but we would need to see impulsive movement to the downside from here. Um, and that would, of course, show next week. And if we do see that shift, then, of course, that would show us the downside movement. But for the moment, expecting continuation to the upside, we always expect trending movement to continue until we do, of course, see a structure fail. And then we can, of course, see a shift in direction. So until we see that, we expect structures to continue. Um, that is currently the daily time frame. Let's go into the four hour time frame here. So the four hour time frame structures, we had this higher high, we had this higher low into this higher high. Price up here failed to close above this high, meaning that this is our higher high point. Um, and we've currently seen price within this range retrace quite deep. Price is actually, let's just remove this for the moment. Um, price is actually retraced deeper than the 78.6. Near enough, a 100% retracement here. So you can see there, price dipping below the 78.6. Near enough, a 100% retracement there within this four hour time frame trading range. So if I just drag that across, you can see that the four hour time frame trading range is higher low into our higher high. This here is our corrective range uh, movement to the downside, sorry, retracement to the downside. Now seeing continuation movement to the upside. One thing we must remember though is that we could see potential range in movement at this area of high to build liquidity. We saw this previous, look here, right? What happens? Price ranges building liquidity before we see price break through. Um, that happens over and over again, purely and simply to create a resistance in a bullish market to entice sellers before the market pushes through. So you can look at that and anticipate that um, from that there, if we do see price, of course, react from this high here um, on the daily time, uh, sorry, on the daily high of the dollar. So we've established there that currently, the daily time frame and the four hour time frame are bullish. They're both reacting from an area of interest. We now need to take a look at the one hour time frame. So here on the one hour time frame, we did previously, not last week, the week prior, we saw price break structures to the downside. This here created a higher low and a higher high. We just closed above. We never on the four hour, but we did on the one hour, creating one hour time frame structures. Therefore, we saw price break to the downside, creating a lower low. We created lower high into lower low point into our lower high into a new lower low. Now, this lower low formed, as we know, on the four hour time frame below the 78.6 retracement. It also reacted to this daily structure point that I mentioned to you guys as well. It is also reacting to an area down here of one hour time frame imbalance. There is also equal lows right here, which created liquidity with some equal lows over here that did get swept to the downside before we've now seen price push to the upside, breaking one hour time frame structures. Now we've broken one hour time frame structures, therefore all time frame is now back in line bullish and I would expect 
price to eventually take this high. Do remember we could range at this area. We may see a bit of a pullback first. We want to see it corrective to then see upside movement. We don't want to be seeing impulsive movement showing momentum shift um, on the daily time frame because that would show us the possibility that price may look to actually come lower, as I said. So we definitely want to see price, of course, if it's going to retrace, retrace down potentially corrective. It may build some liquidity on these lows here before sweeping that, closing some imbalance before we continue higher because you need to remember that this is currently the lower low. We don't have our new higher high at the minute uh, because we've not started our retracement. We've only just broken the lower high. So therefore, this is currently our push. Lower low into a potential higher high when it forms. Then we expect a retracement within that range um, before we, of course, see potential upside. So could potentially get some uh, equal lows form liquidity before we do see that move to the upside. Uh, we don't know how it's going to form. Um, we just have to allow the market um, to dictate and form. So from here... All three time frames are bullish, is showing great potential of continuation movement to the upside in line with structures as we've continuously looked to follow. And we can see right here that we've most definitely had this here as an impulse push. We've then most definitely taken a corrective move here to the downside. Breaking structures, we may get a bit of a pullback before we continue, range a bit before we break through to the upside. Exactly what we see play out over and over again. That right there is the US dollar. It's time to move on into the yen. So moving into the yen, we are bearish um, on all time frames at the moment, as long as we do not see this lower high broken. Let's take us into the naked charts and break this down um, from the daily time frame like so. So resetting the chart, zooming in here, uh, we have our highest point right here that caused the break of our previous low right here. Okay, so this gives us, sorry, let's drag this up. This gives us our new lower low point right here. And four hour and daily trading ranges are the same. Okay, so uh, this is our whole range to the downside, putting more weight onto the one hour time frame in this region. Um, so uh, at the moment, we've seen price here on the daily time frame. It came up here and uh, we swept liquidity uh, right there. And this formed at the area of the 61.8 retracement. So 61.8 retracement right there. Was it a previous structure point? It wasn't. Price never came in to retest previous structure point right there. Uh, it was a rough area, though, of um, support. So you can see here we had this support rest in there. Price retested it as resistance and came back in here again as resistance. So we have that area there at around 7,800 um, where price has reacted at resistance there as well. We're now shifted bearish here on the one hour time frame. So every time frame is bearish. Uh, and we need that to remain in order to be able to see further downside. So what have we seen happen here on the one hour time frame. Well, current trading range is this lower high into this lower low. We saw price range a bit of support here before price has then taken this corrective retracement to the upside. We are now seeing price show a smaller corrective move up here where we have seen price sweep some liquidity, tapping into the area here of that 7650 area here. So you can see area of support, area of resistance, area of resistance as well. So 7650 price is retesting. This is also a previous structure point that previously got retested as well. So nice confluence area and we don't want to see this lower high broken. Okay, so we don't want to see this broken. We want to see continuation movement to the downside. Um, and then we expect this low here to be broken. We do have some imbalance below here uh, that price can, of course, look to come and fill before a potential further retracement. Um, but we're coming close into this area here, um, which, of course, is the 100%. Now, when, when I say that we're coming close into this area, by that I mean we've got less trading space. Okay, so price is getting closer to needing to make a decision because it's either going to break that lower high and create a higher high or from here we're going to continue lower, right? So there, that's why um, the, fact of, the fact that we've got less trading space, um, it can, of course, show us that we're, we're getting to that point now where price really needs to make that decision. Um, so right here next week, I will be looking at downside movement um, for for the yen, uh, as long as we don't break this structure to the upside. So looking for some yen weakness as we go into next week. Now we come into US oil, which I mentioned is looking rather interesting. So let's go into the higher time frames. And this time we're actually going to go into the weekly time frame. So let's just open this up right here. Zooming in, we've had a very nice upwards trend. Um, and we have seen, of course, price show this rough double top at this region. Current um, 
weekly structures is this higher low into this higher high. Okay, so we can see that we're bullish here on the weekly time frame. We've also seen price come into the 78.6 retracement. Pretty perfect. You can see right there. This also closed some small weekly imbalance that was left behind right here. There was also some further imbalance just above this point that price has also closed. We've seen price show a strong reaction from this point right here, as you can see, which is really giving us that impulsive push to the upside from this point. We know the weekly's bullish. We could very well from here continue to the upside. We've seen price come into the 78.6, as I just explained on the previous market. That therefore shows us the trading space is getting smaller. So let's go into the daily time frame, and I just want to zoom out because I just want to show you guys here, uh, just make sure it's in shot, um, that the higher low point here is there to there. So daily and weekly um, time frame um, structures are in fact the same because we had this real strong push to the upside here um, when the war, of course, began um, in Ukraine. So that, of course, led us to have this really large trading range. Now, if we take a look at these weekly areas of imbalance, we'll also be able to see right here that it's aligning with this daily area of imbalance that we've seen close. OK, price has also built some rough liquidity in this area here. OK, over here, we've had these lows form, which price has broken to the downside. And then we've seen impulsive movement to the upside. Take a look at all these other pushes. Take a look at these pushes to the upside where we get this slow movement. Here we get the slow choppy for three days before we then shift in momentum. Here we've really just impulsively pushed to the upside. Um, and we've actually broken four hour structures bullish here as well. Um, so bear in mind that the daily time frame is coming from an area of interest. We've also got the same Fibonacci as the weekly time frame. Okay, so we are also reacting off that 78.6. What else can we also see? Well, this here is pretty damn corrective movement, right? Pretty damn corrective movement. We could very well pull into a very nice impulsive push to the upside here uh, for US oil. Um, if we now go into the charts over here, uh, sorry, did we, I just want to go into the four hour, I do apologize. So coming into the, uh, back to the charts here, um, coming into the four hour time frame. So this here is the lows that you can see. We had this low, this low, this low generated before we had the impulse, impulse to the downside. Now remember, this is large liquidity right? Because it needs to, of course, give a big push. So you need to remember that it's not going to be small liquidity. Small liquidity is found in these areas here when price is taking that impulsive push to the upside. Okay, so there's a difference between the different types and when you're when and where you're looking for that. So here we've seen a nice uh, sweep of liquidity uh, pushing to the downside, but this is now led. This here was a lower low. Okay, this here was a four hour time frame lower high. And then we've now had down here a new lower low. We've then seen price now impulsively push to the upside, breaking this lower high to the upside. Weekly's bullish, daily's bullish, four hours bullish. Everything here at the minute is looking very, very bullish for US oil when we're seeing impulsive movement to the upside. Um, so let's take us into the one hour time frame as we've now established that um, price has broken four hour time frame and you can see that lower high point is right here. Okay, so price has broken that lower high. Now price was very impulsive when it done it. And here you can see the smaller areas of liquidity that I was just talking about. Okay, you have larger liquidity, small liquidity, depending on the time frame, depending on the move. Okay, so we can see here that we're now within this impulsive push to the upside. Personally, I would expect this to continue until we do start to see some of these small one hour time frame structures broken. When we see a small one hour time frame structure broken, what does it tell us? Four hours retracing. Daily still bullish, weekly still bullish. Okay, so for now, I would expect price to pretty much continue to the upside until one hour time frame structures break. Once the one hour time frame structures break, we're just taking a four hour time frame retracement. We're still bullish. So it's now time to allow price to do what it needs to do. Now we've seen that break. Now we've got all time frames aligned because the one hour here is bullish as well. So four time frames are all bullish. There is so much space to the upside. Bear in mind, we may get a retracement, but buys are looking highly probability, high probability here for US oil. Um, so that there is oil at the moment. Of course, I'm waiting for a new high to form so that we can have a trading range so we can look for price to, of course, take a bit of a retracement uh, for continuation movement. Um, just like here, of course, we just want to see price 
impulse. We want a correction that sweeps the liquidity before the continuation. So we'll be looking for exact same thing, right? Once we've got a range, we do the same thing on all time frames. So uh, you can see that's exactly what I would be looking for right there within US oil. Now, bringing us into um, Euro USD, um, we are overall, of course, bearish. Um, as we know, throughout um, the whole year, we have been bearish to the downside, forming um, great daily retracements into areas of interest within this whole downwards trend. And why would we expect that to change? There's no reason for that to change until structures change, if I'm honest. So uh, we expect that to continue. So right now, daily structure point, lower high right here. We broke beyond this lower low right there. That's our previous low. And this here is our current lower low point. Okay, so we've got lower high into lower low. Uh, we can put a fib on this from the high into our low down here. We can see that we've retraced between the 61.8 and the 78.6, showing a reaction there off the 61.8. Does anything else align at the 61.8? Well, we have this daily area of imbalance right here. For some reason, it didn't clone that. But here we have a daily area of imbalance that price is also showing a reaction from. So a nice area to see price potentially form a new lower high and continue to the downside. Price isn't reacting at a previous structure point. However, we do have this rough area of sort of resistance through here that price is respecting, but it's nothing really too great. It's more so the daily imbalance and the 61.8 retracement. Bringing us into the four hour time frame. Our four hour time frame structures are the same as the daily. Now, you may be thinking, how is that? Well, if we take a look over here, you can see that we broke below this low right here, creating a lower low. This is the lower high. Therefore, we created a higher high, but this all that this did was sweep all of this liquidity. We've then broken to the downside and we've created this lower low. So those tr the trading range is the same. It's fine. It doesn't mean nothing. We just treat it as the same. So here in this area here as well, what can we see? Well, price has also respected four-hour time frame imbalance. Okay, so here we've got four-hour time frame imbalance. Now we can actually see the area of uh, resistance or support term resistance a little bit better here. It actually aligns at around 0 0.99500, around one psychological area. Price did just push above this area um, slightly. But it's around that region there, so we can see that there's a four-hour time frame uh, area of interest there as well, where price has reacted from here, pushing to the downside. We already know that the current trading range is this high into this low uh, on the four-hour and the daily. We're reacting from an area of interest, so let's take us into the one-hour time frame. Now, the one-hour time frame has brought us all the way back down into the higher low point. Now, this here has not yet had an actual close below. Very, very close, but didn't actually close below. The dollar did break. So therefore, what we may see is the dollar take a little bit of a retracement. And here we may get price react off of this area of previous higher low. Okay, this here would be pretty much to entice uh, buyers as long as we, of course, see it corrective. Uh, there is liquidity that has been left behind right here that could very well get swept in order to see us break to the downside. Uh, what would confirm, of course, more further downside, which is obvious, and again, this is always letting the market dictate to you with confirmation, is letting this low get broken. Okay, here, this is smaller liquidity. We've already had all of our large liquidity swept across here. So right here, we're looking for smaller liquidity here. So this here would be smaller liquidity pushed to the downside. We'll look for the same again, move to the downside. And we'd expect this overall low to be broken to the downside because that is normal movement. Okay, that is just standard continuation movement. Um, so we'll see if we do get that follow through next week. And uh, we break this structure as well to the downside. Uh, currently, the one hour does remain bullish here for euro usd but we do have the daily bearish the four hour still bearish um and on the us dollar all time frames are currently bullish so showing signs that we could very well see further downside movement here for uh euro usd um so that is what i'm looking at as we go into next week last but not least we've got euro aud right here um and this is a market that is actually mentioned quite often in our free public community. Um, so if you do want to join that, the link is in our dis in the, is in the description below. Um, but yeah, a lot of people seem to trade this market. So I thought I would break it down as it's at an interesting point right now. So let's break down our daily structure points. So here we had this lower low point right here. 
price broke and closed below this, okay? So this meant that we had a new lower low point. So if this here is our lower low, the highest point that caused the break is right here, okay? So this here is our highest point. Um, we had previously had this low, okay, and this high. When price came up into this high, we failed to close above, okay? So failed to close above right here, and then we saw the highest point right here caused the break below this low. So therefore, this becomes our lower high. And we've now seen price do what? Push all the way back up into this high. But once again, we're failing to close above. So we're at a daily lower high point. We're yet again failing to close above. Could we do what we did before? What happened here? We shift in structures to the downside. So what could we be looking for right here? For downside, shift in structures right? We're at the 100% of the daily time frame lower high. Price has literally, at this point, got no option but to either break this lower high or break lower time frame, um, break lower time frame higher lows to take us back bearish to the downside so that price can come and break this low. They are the options that price has. It is as simple as that, right? So therefore, if we take that information and we just delete all of that, and we take that information into the four-hour time frame. Right here, what we can see is our four-hour time frame trading range, higher low into our higher high. This right here is our four-hour time frame trading range. We would need to see this higher low here broken to the downside in order to take the four-hour time frame bearish. Or we break this high to the upside, and we end up with a daily close above that high. That's what price needs to show us. That's what price, that's what I'm waiting for right now. Right now in here, we've closed this imbalance. We've closed this imbalance. Right now it is choppy in this area. Price hasn't decided, right? Could be building orders. We need to allow price to dictate. This is something that not a lot of people allow the market to do, okay? Sometimes you have to wait one, two, three moves before the market aligns with what you're looking for. That's fine. Nothing wrong with that. Okay, because you're looking for the high probability trades. You're the one that's patient, right? And that's what it's all about, allowing the market to fulfill your edge. And that's when you take the trade. So right here, as we're at the daily lower high, doesn't fulfill my edge to do anything unless we break that high and continue with bullish structures. Then we're all bullish because the 1H, 4H and daily would be bullish. Okay, or we break the four hour to the downside, realigning with the daily. And then we would also want to see the 1H break. Now, the 1H structures are the same as the 4-hour. So therefore, all we're focused on at the moment is this higher low and this higher high. We want price to break either way. What is price doing in the middle? Building lots of liquidity. That is all that price is doing, okay? So right now, we have got equal highs. Let's put them on. So we've got equal highs right here. And just down here, we have equal lows. So right now, this tells me price is building liquidity before it looks to take its move. So I need to be patient. I need to wait for price to either break that high or I need to wait for price to break that four hour and one hour higher low to enable us to see downside movement. In that area, I'm not going to guess. I'm not going to gamble. I'm going to wait for price to dictate. Okay. If we break above this high, but we fail to have a daily close above that structure, I'm still not interested because I need to see that fulfill, right? I need to see that close. Why? Well, what happened previous? So if we go into the daily again and we just remove all drawings, what happened previous? We came all the way up. We kept wicking it, but we failed to close. What happened after that? We shifted in structures all the way to the downside, breaking this low. Why am I going to anticipate further upside if we fail to break that high, right? It's just about being patient and letting the market dictate. It's a real interesting area. It just needs to show us its, its next hand and where it wants to go. Um, but that there has been Technical Insights, episode number 143. It's been a 25-minute episode. So for the 25 minutes, please do give us a like comment and subscribe. I appreciate all of you guys always tuning in every week and we've reached 47,000 subscribers soon to hit 50,000. If you click that button, just need you to click that button and I will see you guys in the next episode. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye.